Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to talk, sort of, about the fact that the Men of Iron have returned to Warhammer 40,000. Now, you probably already knew this, because absolutely everywhere went mental yesterday when it turned out that UR025, the uh, the big stompy robot from Blackstone Fortress, is actually one of the Men of Iron. It's not an Imperial robot, he's not an Admet creation, none of that, no, 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 this is a relic from a, a huge amount of time in the past. This is an actual proper AI robot walking around pretending <laughs> pretending to be an admech thing, which is pretty awesome. I really like that. I like the fact that there is audio explanation as to why this thing would have survived as long as it has, and the way that it kind of gets around and does what it needs to do. Essentially dumbing yourself down to look like the thick robots that the admoc admech makes, admoc makes, uh, admech makes, is a really nice disguise, and I kind of like the fact that it's it's managed to get by by just stamping an Aquila on itself and going, oh yeah, no, uh, the uh, Archmage sent me, absolutely, yeah, completely, totally, beep boop, like that kind of that kind of subterfuge from something that old and that smart is really really cool. Now the thing that I'm actually really excited about isn't so much the fact that there's this one. There's this one representative of the Men of Iron still wandering around. It's not the fact that we have one of them hiding in plain sight. It's not the fact that there is a model for it. It's more the potential in terms of, and I'm not talking armies here, but in terms of the universe as a whole that is coming from this particular reveal. See, of course, the temptation for all models where we get something new is to go, give me a codex of that shit, and I'm guilty of that too. I do that a lot. I know I do that a lot because I see something awesome and I'm like, Man, a whole book full of this shit would be great. And it would be great, but we don't actually need a codex for every single model that is ever released. My exception to that is the spindle drones, but because they look like something out of War of the Worlds, and I just want more of that. It's so alien and so weird, so different to anything else in Warhammer 40k that I can't help but kind of go, I really want more right now. But that's just a personal thing. I don't think I would apply that to a lot of other stuff that might show up as one-offs in Warhammer 40k. Um, like, for instance, an Agents of the Imperium Codex would be great because it would roll a whole bunch of different smaller factions into one bigger faction and therefore be good for ease of use, ease of play, and could see some cool crossover. An entire book dedicated only to rogue traders, I don't think I'd go for that. I don't think that's something that would be particularly interesting to me. But rolled into a bigger hole, absolutely. Men of Iron, I don't want a codex for Men of Iron. Now, you, you, you probably think, well, why not? Because that seems to be, for the most part, all the comments on this kind of range from, oh, that's cool, to give me a codex this instant. There's loads of them. There must be thousands of them wandering around. They could have full armies. What if they make a comeback? What if they start wiping out humanity again, all over again? It'd be great. I think probably at the moment there's enough story stuff planned in 40k just around Vigilus alone to ensure that that would never happen. Um, but also... There are some things in 40k that I I feel like I feel like the mystery makes them better. I feel like the unknown makes them more interesting than knowing absolutely everything about them. And the men of iron, to be honest, fall into that category for me. Um, I will say that one of the things I'm most excited about with these guys is actually a lore side of things. It's a story side of things. It's a narrative side, and not a gameplay side. See. One of the one of the greatest things about the Horus Heresy series for me was the the exploration factor of those books. Now, obviously, as you get further on into the series, there's less fighting alien species, there's less conquering new planets, and there's more, you know, marines beating the shit out of each other until everyone's dead. Understandably so, it is the Horus Heresy series after all. But it touched on some really interesting kind of races, some really interesting cultures, all of which obviously fell under the uh, the, the yoke of imperial oppression, obviously. Um, but among those things, you had all these different alien cultures that were so unique, that were so different to humanity as a whole. And, you know, a good portion of them were fragments of humanity that were being reconquered, but had diverged so heavily from what the Emperor decreed as being human that they were exterminated. Again, it's pretty standard. It is the Horus Heresy series, after all. But there is an entire era of unexplored stuff. There are entire cultures that we know nothing about. There are entire races, entire systems of governance, entire planets, 
that we have no idea of because there's not really been anything written about them. Now we know the general gist of it, like we know we know vaguely what the men of iron are, we know vaguely what they did. But that has not been expanded on in terms of things like in terms of things like novels, in terms of audiobooks, in terms of like serialized dramas or anything like that. The appearance of U R zero two five or thirty five as uh, as I believe he should be known. Um, it's exciting because there is now you know one of the men of iron in forty k, but it's also exciting because this is a, a like a a race a faction that in terms of detailed in depth law is kind of unexplored now. The thing is that I don't want to know what every single man of iron is doing right now. Like, I don't want to know that. I don't want to know exact numbers as to how many of these there are roaming around. I don't want to know their specific goals, their specific aims. The occasional appearance, as in 35, is absolutely fine because it, it feeds into that mystery and it feeds into the knowledge that they are out there. They are doing something. What they're doing, we don't actually know, but they are doing something. They are around. They have managed to infiltrate. They have managed to survive. They have adapted. They are still present in the Imperium. The appearance of this, though, and the fact that it is stated outright, and the fact that it talks openly about the Dark Age of Technology, about this race that, you know, brought humanity so, so close. It's exciting to me because if there's enough interest and enough people want to know, if enough people make enough noise and if it's popular enough, we might actually get not books about what they're doing now, but books about what happened back then. That's the thing that's interesting to me. That's the thing that I want to know more about. There are certain aspects of Warhammer 40k that I, I prefer to remain unexplored. Things like the, the missing, the, like the two Primarchs that we don't know anything about. I like the fact that we don't know anything about them. In the case of, like, the Men of Iron, though, you can maintain that mystery in the current universe. You can maintain that mystery in the current, like, maintain that mystery in the current setting whilst giving a shed load of information about how they, you know, how they came to be, how they came to evolve, how they replicated themselves, you know, specifics on how their culture worked, how their society worked, what their, not just the aim of wipe out all the shit, but, like, long-term goals what was like what was the focus beyond that there's a whole load of unexplored stuff around the men of iron that has, has stayed unexplored for i think fairly good reason in that there's plenty of other stuff to explore in 40k that is relevant to 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 now to to you know people that exist in the setting at this time but the horse heresy has proved i think beyond a shadow of a doubt that what came before 40k is just as important, what came before 40k and what sets up the universe of Warhammer 40,000 is in, insanely popular, and it's in it's one of those things whereby when that when that was announced, the whole Horus Heresy thing was announced. I was like, oh, this should do all right. I'd quite like to know how this all came about. And then it's we're like what 800 books in, and uh, like we've only just started the Siege of Terror, and it's proved to be incredibly kind of almost like required reading to a certain extent to to some people it's like you, you've got to know what happened before 40k you have to read the horse heresy but what about before that in the horse heresy we had all these glimpses we had like the uh what was it the alamic quietude that was a really really interesting race that was a really interesting faction that admittedly got crushed but that was something where i looked at that and went that that race, I want to know more about that. Like, I want to know more about how that society evolved, how they ended up becoming what they became, how they diverged so heavily from humanity that this is what they are now. It's the same thing with the Men of Iron, but we now have like proper, we now have proper setup for all of this stuff. The popularity of the Horus Heresy series really does make me think that you could quite easily get well not just get away with but you could quite easily produce books you know detailing the fall of humanity the dark age of technology the rise of the men of iron you know all these different events that you could extrapolate on now without necessarily affecting 40k as it is you know these are events that have already happened but to know more about the culture surrounding them to know more about the different races surrounding them 
that wouldn't impact 40k. That wouldn't take away any of the mystery as to what the Men of Iron are doing now, given that we clearly know that they are obviously among people of the Imperium. Um, I mean, travelling to things like Blackstone Fortresses, for instance. You could actually explore all of that, like a proper deep look into the law of that race without messing anything up. And it would work. And it would set the stage for, you know, the sudden turning up of UR025. It would be a case of actually having that background and knowing what made what what made this thing tick? Like what made it work? What made it decide what it was going to do back then? Is that something that is applicable now? Or is it different now? There's just so many different things that could be done that it's like, on the one hand, yeah, cool, Men of Iron are in 40k. That's that's awesome. What I really want to know because of this is what they were doing before. What they are doing before all of this. How they survived this long. How they managed to keep themselves going for this long. You could leave part of that a mystery, but just the basis of how they came to be and how they worked and what they did would be enough to well, it would be enough to set you up all the way up to one of them turning up, for instance, on a Blackstone Fortress. It's really exciting, but it's exciting because I want to see more of them in their original setting. I want to see more of them in terms of their origin. Having a massive codex full of men of iron would be kind of interesting, yeah, but I feel like, as a faction, they don't need that. I feel like they, we can we can get by with one showing up occasionally and it being a big deal. Like that's one of the things that I think the uh, that shouldn't be kind of ignored. Having something show up when you don't expect it is much more of a big deal than knowing that a whole load of the things exist and that they are coming. It makes it more interesting, it makes it more exciting, to my mind, anyway. So yeah, there you go. You are 25 one of the men of iron, present in Warhammer 40k, faffing around on a Blackstone Fortress, and uh, I just want to know more about them in general now, because it's just like, okay, this is here, they're talking about it, What? how did all of this start? Give me the information right now. Books, I want books, I want series, I want audio books, I want the lot. Whether it'll ever happen or not is completely... I have no idea. But it would be nice if it did. Question is, would you read all that stuff if it came out? If there was like a whole series detailing the Dark Age of Technology, the rise of the Men of Iron, the fall of... Well, the fall of the Men of Iron as well, obviously. Um, would you read it? Would you read all of it? And would you be excited? Or would you just be like, eh? I don't care. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. In the meantime, feel free to click the Patreon, subscribe, all of that shit. Click it if you like. Don't click if you don't want to. And I will see you for the next one. Toodaloo.